Today we are going to talk about out-of-memory issues that might happen in your production clusters one day or another. And you, as an architect or developer, can do a great job by estimating the required cluster capacity. But that required cluster capacity might be enough for the data volume of today. But imagine that in three years from now, five years or 10 years, the volume of your data can burst. And the cluster capacity of today would not meet the needs of tomorrow. So what can you do today to avoid potential outages if any out of memory situation is approaching? I'm going to talk about several memory management techniques or out of memory uh, preventive measures. And with those techniques in place, you will be able to keep your cluster operational while you're taking care of how to scale out the cluster or while you're negotiating extra resources so that your cluster is recovered to you know some some bigger capacity uh, speaking about agenda uh, i'll start with the ignite storage engine a sort of deep dive uh, that's useful because we are going to talk uh, we want we are going to uh, talk about different <clears throat> memory management techniques and it's better it's it's much better to understand what are the internals of the storage engine before you proceed with any specific you know advices on how you know to deal with out of memory issues once we do this we will switch to the generic techniques overview i'll uh, describe you what are the eviction and expiration policies of ignite this is something you know fundamental and universal that exists in every product category especially in different storage engines after that we will proceed with the overview of the off heap specific techniques uh, things like swapping or ignite native persistence and finally i would like to touch point on the question on the topic of sql because with ignite you can run uh, ad, ad hoc sql queries with various complexity and depending on the complexity of your sql query it might happen that your java heap can be extremely saturated which also can lead to <clears throat> out of memory incidents but first thing first let's uh, check the ignite storage engine internals to remind ourselves uh, how ignite is being used what are the primary use cases of ignite first uh, because that will help us to understand what are the most uh, frequent configuration uh, settings of that storage engine of ignite with the first use case ignite is deployed as a distributed in memory cache in that configuration you use only in memory storage tier of ignite ignite caches all the data in memory and also it can write through all the changes to your external database to your backend system and with this configuration the benefit is obvious you're just offloading or accelerating your applications in your backend system how ignite is different let's say in this configuration from uh, classical caches such as redis or memcached here is Ignite as a cache provides you with it well, like with standard SQL APIs, with ACID transactions, with compute APIs, if to name few. The other use case of Ignite that is also quite prominent is Ignite as a database. In this configuration, Ignite storage engine uh, uses both in memory tier and the disk tier. When it comes to the disk tier, you need to enable Ignite native persistence and we are also going to talk in the today context and in the today's conversation i'm going you know to describe ignite native persistence as as a memory overflow or out of memory preventive measure so let's first look at the ignite memory tier ignite belongs to the class of uh, software that is written in java so basically that's a java middleware uh, but and we use Java heap, but at the same time, Ignite every Ignite node, which is a Ignite, which is a usually an independent uh, process, allocates an off heap memory. In that off heap memory, Ignite keeps all your data and indexes, and that off heap memory is fully managed by Ignite. It's not visible to uh, to the Java virtual machine. At the same time, we cannot, uh, you know, skip the usage of Java heap. As a Java middleware, Ignite, whenever you are querying Ignite, whenever you're executing any tasks with Ignite, all those result sets or any temporary objects that are generated by your queries and workloads are placed and stored in the Java heap. 
for the amount of, of the time needed for this Ignite node to respond, let's say, to your uh, application. And when we are talking about the scalability principle uh, uh, in the relation to this Ignite uh, memory tier, when you need more memory space, you're just scaling out your cluster, which means that you're getting much more of heap memory and you're uh, kind of uh, getting uh, much more uh, Java heap. If we decide to go even deeper and to talk and try to classify uh, the Ignite storage engine, it can be classified as a B3 storage engine. What it means? All that whole of heap memory internally is split into memory segments. When Ignite, for instance, when you're giving Ignite one gigabyte of data, Ignite does not usually go and allocate the whole one gigabyte from your requesting it from your operating system. It's quite opposite. It will try to allocate uh, all that memory in special chunks. And we call those chunks memory segments that are continuous, that is a continuous memory space that is allocated, requested from the operating system and managed by Ignite. So what's allocated inside of that memory segment? Ignite splits that uh, memories, every memory segment into pages of fixed size. Usually every page has like is about like 32 kilobytes in size. And there are different types of pages. We have data pages, and inside of the, those data pages, Ignite keeps your records, which are key value pairs. Also, we have index pages. The index pages usually form a B plus G structure for uh, a specific index. It can be a primary index of your cache or table, or it can be any secondary index that you can define in Ignite. And also there are some uh, metadata pages, internal pages that are used by Ignite. So why do we call, why we uh, classify Ignite as a B3 storage engine? It's all simple, because whenever you are doing any uh, boot operation, insert operation, or whenever you're doing any search in Ignite, everything goes through uh, a B plus three structure. So for instance, let's say that I want to get uh, some key from this node. When this request arrives to this node, uh, the node will look for the root page of the index of your key, and then it will traverse this index until it finds, let's say, a leaf page that stores this index. So you found that index for your key. And after that, inside of that leaf page, Ignite has a pointer to a respective data page and to your key value pair that you are looking for right now. So generally when you're doing any lookup or any insert in Ignite, everything goes through a B plus three data structures. In this case, for instance, I, will, I was using, let's say the primary uh, tree. In other scenarios, if you're using any secondary key, it will be uh, going through another B plus three data structure. So that's like in, in the nutshell how Ignite storage engine looks like and operates. Also, if to go a little bit uh, further and assume that you decided to enable Ignite native persistence, basically when you're enabling Ignite's native uh, disk tier, then uh, m Ignite native persistence will start keeping all the pages, all your data uh, records on disk without any exception. So 100% of the data will be located on disk. And when it comes to the memory tier, Ignite will be uh, caching as much data as possible, as, depending on how, on, on, how, on how big your memory capacity at the moment. So if we take this example, we have data page number five in the memory segment, and for sure the same page exists uh, on disk. The same we can say about the data page two that is available uh, in both memory and on disk tiers. But when it comes to pages zero, one, three, or four, those do not exist in memory, which means that whenever your application requests any data that is located in those pages right now, Ignite uh, storage engine will go to disk and will read those pages from there. So, and it will be using also B, B plus three data, data structures and special logic to find a page uh, on disk. So that's how like, uh, Ignite B plus three storage engine operates and executes. And right now, by knowing those details, let's figure out, let's uh, try to uh, transition to our primary topic. Let's say that you deployed your Apache Ignite cluster. Uh, 
And when you were doing the estimate, you assume that the, the let's say 500 gigabyte uh, gigabytes of data or the capacity would be more than enough. But also you expect that let's say in one year or like two years the data volume uh, can grow. And right now you need you want to be prepared for that stuff. So what are the techniques that you can use? Because let's say that if it, in, in, on one day suddenly you you uh, you start running out of memory, and you would decide you know to scale out your cluster, that's that scaling will not happen instantaneously, right? It might take for some it might take one minute, for some it can take well, let's say several hours or even days if you need to negotiate extra resources for your cluster. That's why all those memory preventive measures such as eviction policies can be your lifesaver so that while you are scaling out your cluster, your cluster, your current cluster with the current capacity will stay operational. So if to talk about eviction policies, with eviction policies, those are reasonable for two configurations of Ignite storage engine. The first uh, configuration is Ignite as a pure in-memory cluster when Ignite basically only caches data. It does not persist anything on disk. Or you can use Ignite in that in-memory cluster configuration, but also the primary, the golden copy of your, your records always will be located on some external database. And if it's required, Ignite can always automatically write through all the changes to that database. And here is, let's say that at some point of time, if your cluster started experiencing, uh, uh, started running out of memory, then these eviction policies would help us to you know remove uh, some old records that are not used uh, frequently for the off heap memory ignite supports two algorithms for now the first one is random uh, lru and there is another version of this more advanced version which is random to lru if, if to describe you the primary idea of how uh, the algorithm iterates by taking random lru as an example let's check the uh, picture to the right of the slide. So what happens? Let's say that Ignite needs to evict some of the pages. For every pages, when you enable random other you, Ignite will be tracking the last access time when that page was accessed. And under the access, we are assuming that the page was updated or you uh, you're reading a value from this page. And all those access times are recorded in a special data structure. So whenever the time for the eviction comes, Ignite will randomly select five pages. And after that, among those five pages, it will select the one that was uh, with the oldest timestamp. I mean, the, the one that was accessed uh, like later than, the, late, uh, later than the other pages. So in this picture, let's say that was the page with timestamp 10, uh, which is the oldest. Uh, and after that, uh, the eviction algorithm starts, you know, evicting all the records from that selected page. Uh, why don't we, uh, why don't, uh, why don't we remove all? The, why don't we clean the whole page right away? Because some of the entries, like it's shown on this picture, can be locked right now. For instance, this entry that is locked might be used by one of your running transactions, and you don't want, you know, to uh, introduce any data inconsistency. That's why that. A record that specific record will stay in this page and then later it can be moved to another page or it will be compacted etc but that's how it works and the difference between random other you and random two other you algorithms is that with the second one with random two ignite will be tracking two timestamps because let's say it might happen that uh this page with timestamp um, 10 is accessed let's say every every kind of every five seconds but other pages are accessed only once a minute which means that we made a mistake and in fact we removed the page that is accessed frequently but if you're tracking two timestamps you will understand much better uh, which page uh, should be evicted first from the configuration standpoint uh, all you need to do is as follows when you're defining your data storage uh, configuration in this case, we are creating their data storage region uh, in with 20 gigabyte size. You usually would set some initial size. I'm saying that by default, when this node starts, please allocate 500 megabytes of uh, memory from the operating system. And then I'm saying that that's your maximum capacity. You cannot uh, allocate more than 20 gigabytes on this given machine. And if this node uh, goes beyond this maximum capacity, then 
this eviction policy will kick in and Ignite will start automatically evicting the pages, uh, freeing up your memory. Uh, and here is to conclude on this uh, technique, uh, I would like to bring to your attention uh, several things you need to keep in mind when your cluster capacity is recovered. And right now you need to do something with already evicted records. Let's say that you evicted 1000 records while you were scaling out the cluster. And right now you need to do something with them. Like how do I bring them back? So, and here is actually you have, you keep, you, you need to keep in mind two things. If Ignite is, is used, if Ignite storage engine is used, uh, is tethered together with, let's say some external database using our, using our cache store interface. In this scene, and if you use key value APIs like cache get, cache puts, then all those cache get queries can load missing records from your external database. But if you're using any other APIs such as SQL, scan queries, continuous queries, anything else, then Ignite will not be able to uh, read through all those records from, from an external database. That will be your responsibility to reload all the evicted uh, records. But anyway, keep this in mind. Uh, we have some eviction policies for Java heap, but right now when we are talking about those eviction policies in relation to the Java heap, Ignite has on heap cache, but that feature is used rarely. I'm not sure that this feature uh, should be supported in Ignite 3.0, but nevertheless, if for any reason you enable Ignite on heap cache to that for, keep, for keeping your records, then you can check uh, the following existing uh, eviction policies such as other you, first in, first out, and sorted policies. I will uh, leave it to you to check this out. With eviction policies, uh, eviction policies uh, belong to uh, so-called uh, proactive measurement technique, meaning that you define those eviction policies and once your cluster started run, running out of memory, only at that time uh, the eviction policy will kick in and will start uh, removing records from your uh, in-memory cluster. With expiration policies, you can have a so-called reactive technique, meaning that if you already know that you don't need to keep all the records in your cluster, uh, then just ask that cluster to remove, uh, let's say, those records based on uh, their uh, creation time. For instance, you might be streaming some, you know, uh, data samples and your clusters, and you you need to use that data uh, only, like you, you need to keep in the cluster only the data for the last like one or two days. Once uh, any record becomes three days old, you would it there will be nothing wrong to remove it. And the expiration policies are is actually the feature that you can use to achieve that. So how you can uh, configure those expiration policies with Ignite? When you're creating your cache configuration, uh, you need to set expiration policy factory. And as a parameter of that factory, you need to define uh, the duration time. So for how long you would like to keep all the records that will be placed into this cluster. And this flag is exactly useful for the reactive uh, technique. Eager TTL means that Ignite will launch a special thread, background thread, on every node. And that thread will be keeping a list of all the records with their durations. And whenever, let's say, any record expires, it will be automatically removed from Ignite. If you do not enable this property, Eager TTL, then the record will be removed only when you access it. Let's say that you put a record like one day ago, uh, like like you put a record like three minutes ago, and then in 10 minutes you're accessing the same record, and only in 10 minutes that record will be removed from the cluster. With eager detail, you can uh, remove uh, the records even, uh, even faster. Uh, another, another interesting feature is that with that example, you defined a global expiration policy for all the records that will be located in that cluster. But also you might have some of the records uh, that you would like to evict earlier or later. For instance, how do you do that? Uh, let's say that you already have some cache created and then uh, if you, you, you can create a special reference to that cache with your additional duration. For instance, here is I'm saying that all there, I'm creating a reference for the cache 
with the duration two minutes. And once I put this record into the cluster, this record will be expired in two minutes and not in five minutes. So that's how you can override the global expiration policy. All right, those were eviction and expiration policies. Uh, and uh, yes, I think that I confused you a little bit when I was you know, uh, talking about proactive and reactive approaches. In fact, eviction policies is your uh, reactive approach because like you defined it, but it will kick in only when you're running out of memory. With expiration policies, that's a proactive approach because you know that some of the records will be redundant, useless in some period in time, and then you just define uh, the time to live for those records. Swapping, so right now let's talk about uh, memory management techniques uh, that are applicable for the off heap memory. So for that, for all those memory segments where Ignite keeps your data records. And in this context, I'd like to introduce you to the very first probably obvious technique, which is swapping. So with swapping, Ignite can store, uh, you can configure a swap space for your Apache Ignite nodes. And once you do this, Ignite will start, Ignite a storage engine, memory engine will start using memory mapped files of your uh, operating systems, uh, you know, as a kind of as a structure where the data will be located. And the operating system will take the responsibility for moving data back and forth between memory and disk if memory becomes uh, a scarce resource for your Ignite node or for your whole cluster. However, here is I'd like to give you several precautions because even though this swapping technique is quite universal, it has a couple of drawback drawbacks. The first drawback is that swap space is cleared on restart, meaning that if you had any records on disk because you know the, you were running out of memory and the uh, uh, operating system started swapping data on disk, then if you restart that node or that process, all the records that were in the swap space will evaporate. And those, your goal with the swapping technique, as well as with other uh, out of memory preventive measures, is that once you're approaching that out of memory situation, try to scale out your cluster and get data rebalanced as soon as possible. Because in this situation, let's say that the swapping uh, was activated by the operating system, you uh, spotted a performance drop, you started, uh, but then you kind of delayed and you started scaling out your cluster, like let's say with. 10 minutes delay or 20 minutes delay but then throughout that time your node went down and you lost some data that was located in your swap space and now you need to reload everything from somewhere else uh, and also it might sound surprising but uh, another drawback or another inconvenience is that the swapping uh, might impact the latency and performance characteristics of your in-memory cluster even if you do not store a bit of data on disk yet uh, you just here is I don't want to go uh, much into the details. I'd like just to uh, uh, leave a couple of pointers for you. Check uh, different operating system parameters such as VM swappiness, extra free kilobyte size, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Because generally, even if your Apache Ignite node has enough memory capacity, and generally all the data should fit in memory right now, but uh, Remember that your Apache Ignite node process is not the only one that is running on the operating system. And depending on the operating system wide settings for the swappiness, your uh, records of your Ignite cluster can be swapped to disk even before Ignite uh, uh, kind of used all the allowed memory space that you uh, gave to it. So check this out and keep this in mind. So how do we configure swapping in Ignite? It's so simple when you're defining your data storage configuration. Like here, I'm, let's say, creating five meg uh, 500 megabytes region. I am uh, setting some initial size, maximum size, and then I'm telling Ignite that, listen, Ignite, use uh, the swap space, use the swap directory to keep all their files. And then I know that once I do this, the operating system will be responsible for the data movement back and forth. All right, and final thing, and final thing here is Ignite native persistence. Probably that would be your uh, most advanced uh, out-of-memory preventive measure. As I as I explained earlier, 
uh, on the very first opening slides, Ignite Native Persistence, if you enable the Ignite Native Persistence, most likely you will be dealing with the use case of Ignite as a database. Because once this happens, Ignite Native Persistence will be keeping 100% of your data on disk. And then, depending on your memory capacity, either you will be caching the same amount of data in memory or a subset of this data. And the difference, let's say, uh, if to contrast Ignite Native Persistent to the swapping, to the swap space, in terms of them, as if, if you're talking about out of memory preventive measures, then here is I would say that the benefit of Ignite Native Persistence is that uh, if your node goes down for any reason, you are not losing any data because whatever is stored on Ignite Native Persistence in Ignite Native Persistence is durable, consistent, and survives cluster restarts. If you need to restart one node, if any node uh, goes down, then you restart everything, your data will be on disk. And also another benefit, not only don't you lose any data, but also you don't need to warm up, you don't need to preload any data in memory from Ignite Native Persistence after you do restarts. Once your cluster becomes operational after restart, Ignite can serve all the data from disk. And here is uh, how do you enable Ignite Native Persistence. Uh, in the nutshell, the configuration is simple and straightforward. When you're creating your data storage configuration with all those parameters that I decided to skip on this slide, then you just need to enable persistence for your data region. And you can decide for some of the data regions you can have this persistence enabled. For others, you just might want to use only the in-memory tier of Apache Ignite. Uh, certainly, once you do this, then you also might want, you know, to do some extra optimizations by, you know, tweaking or changing some other settings related to the Ignite native persistence. But that's not the topic of our today's conversation. All right, guys. So I think that before we, before we what we've covered right now, let me do a quick recap. We reviewed eviction policies and expiration policies as the most obvious and uh, universal out of memory preventive measures. Those are easy to use, and uh, they actually don't have, uh, let's say, any. Uh, they would not have any noticeable impact on your cluster performance characteristics. But there is one significant drawback: if any record gets evicted, or uh, then it becomes your responsibility in most of the use cases to bring those records back if you need it. Uh, when it comes to the swapping, actually, swapping allows you to use disk as a preventive measure, but one of the drawbacks is that uh, if your node gets restarted, you're losing all the data that was stored, not only in memory, but also uh, in uh, in the swap space. And also with the swapping enabled, uh, there will be some, you know, a performance penalty. Even if you, uh, even if at, at the given moment, uh, there is no any single record on this. With native persistence, it's kind of a generic solution. It allows you it always keeps all the data on disk. It always, uh, you, you're not losing any data on restart, et cetera. But for sure, as long as you keep data on disk, you need to allocate, you need to consider that in addition to memory space, you need to give Ignite some disk space. And performance of your write operations will be uh, a little bit slower if to compare to, let's say, to a pure in memory cluster. So those are uh, different things you need to keep in mind. So, and before we uh, finish our conversation, you know, by checking uh, the uh, SQL memory quarters or how we can, you know, avoid out of memory issues when we are running complex SQL queries, let me do a quick break and show you a demo. With that demo, I'm going to demonstrate how we can, how uh, different, how, how eviction policies and Ignite Native Persistence can be used as a memory overflow uh, preventive measure. So let's do this now, and then we will return to the SQL. All right, so what I've got, uh, I downloaded Apache Ignite, the latest version from the website. And right now, I'm going to start just one single Apache Ignite node cluster. I'm using uh, the following configuration. Let me show you this configuration first. Uh, this configuration is just, you know, some configuration. I'm creating data storage. And uh, here is I'm saying that I want Ignite to be given no more than 500 megabytes on my machine. Uh, after I start this node, let me do this. 
uh, we will confirm that I was given this space. Yep, this node can use up to 500 megabytes of data. And that's the initial size. That's usually, I think, that how much memory was uh, reserved and allocated upon the startup. And next, I want to connect to this cluster using SQL line tool. And with that SQL line tool, I want to, let's say, load some sample data and demonstrate you what happens, let's say, if uh, uh, I don't have enough memory capacity. So what I'm doing right now, I have connected to the cluster. I don't have any tables rather than the internal tables that are used and created by Ignite. For instance, here is we have different system use, which you can use to monitor different activities and Ignite such as transaction services, etc. So what I'm going to preload, I'm going to create uh, the following single table fielding. That table will keep different scores and different games, years and players. And then once I create the table, I will load the sample data set. Okay. So let's do uh, the first thing. I need to uh, create this table. And I am using this run command of the SQL line tool. The table is created. And next, I will be using the copy command of Ignite. That's Ignite command. And I'm saying that load all the data into this table from this file. Okay. Uh, the loading has started and finished. Uh, I did it succeeded. I don't have any exception. That's how many records were processed by this copy command. And also, just to confirm that we have the same quantity in the cluster, let me run this. Yeah. Uh, select count, select count from fielding. Yep, the number is the same, right? So, and right now let's try to emulate the out of memory situation. So uh, what I wanna do, let's assume that instead of 500 megabytes, I was given only 15 megabytes. In your real life, you basically will be dealing with another situation when you know the volume of the data bursts. And right now you need to do something about your cluster, which means that you need to scale it out. But while you're scaling that cluster, your cluster, you know, you can uh, run out of memory, you can run out of memory capacity on some of the nodes. Okay, so I've, I've created this cluster. I'm, give, I'm giving only 15 megabytes. Uh, let me restart this node using this updated configuration. All right, the node is started, and right now you see that I, I have only 15 megabytes. I need to recreate this table. Actually, I need to reconnect with SQL line because that's just a new cluster. I'm creating the same table. And now when I start loading the data, I should get an exception. Okay, there was some exception. If I go here, I can see that, uh, yeah, Ignite, Ignite node was shut down due to the auto memory issue because generally during the preloading, uh, Ignite kind of came across this auto memory incident. So how do we go about this? How can we fix this? Uh, if to recall our very first and the most universal suggestion, we can go ahead and enable an eviction policy. Let me do this. I am saying that let me use random to alert you. It's on. So right now, uh, again, I need to start this cluster node using with the eviction policy in place. Okay, I have the same amount of memory space. And now if I reload, if I reconnect to the cluster with SQL line, let me again create this table. And now I execute the same copy command. I should not get an exception. Yep. Uh, uh, the loading phase completed successfully. I don't have any exceptions on the node end as well. But let's do this sanity check because it's the copy command reports that it processed uh, more than 143,000 records. But if I execute the count check, that's how many records we have in the cluster. That's actually what happened. You were loading the records, 
and then uh, ignite came across this out like ignite, ignite started running out of memory and then the eviction policies started removing some of the records so right now let's say and if the, if something like that happens in your production you will lose some data and then that will be your responsibility to return your cluster to, to return those records to the cluster once you you scale it out once you locate more memory more nodes to your cluster so that's the eviction policy but at least i was able to survive the out of memory uh, incident that was inevitable without this setting another option is uh, which i can easily demonstrate right now let's mean instead of eviction policies let me use ignite native persistence as i said to enable that persistence for the data region i just need to switch on this flag uh so what i do right now again uh, as long as this configuration has changed i need to restart the cluster uh i'm starting this node for the last time i hope all right the node is up and running we still have only five mega 15 megabytes available but now we have persistence uh that's good uh also one one remark here if you use uh ignite clusters with the native persistence you also need to activate this cluster because what will happen right now let me see let me show you i'm connecting to the cluster with sql line tool and when i'm trying to load to create a table i will get an exception because uh, because because the cluster cluster is not activated you have to activate all the clusters with Ignite Native Persistence because when you're restarting your nodes, you have to wait while all the nodes are up and running. And only after that, you have to enable your cluster. And only after that, your applications uh, are allowed to update that cluster or let's say read anything from it. That's how it works by default. So I need to use this control sh command. This command is also, this script is also provided in the binary distribution of Ignite. And all I need to do is to execute this activate command. Okay. Now the cluster is activated. And if I uh, execute the same operation from the from the SQL line tool side, yes, I were able to create the table. And final check, I'm loading all the data. So right now, fingers crossed, uh, the loading uh, should finish without any exceptions. But it will take more time because most of the data will reside on disk. And Ignite right now will be, you know, uh, moving data back and forth between memory and disk. There are some optimizations that you can take when you're loading the data. For instance, you can turn off right ahead log files, etc., to speed up the loading, but that's not, you know, the primary focus of our today conversation. So uh, the loading completed successfully, uh, and uh, let me check how many records I have in the cluster. The same amount. This is how many records were processed by the copy command, and that's how many records we have in the cluster. So we are good. So which means that, yes, we were able to avoid that out of memory incidents because we've got the native persistence of Ignite. And uh, even if you're running out of memory, even if you have only 15 megabytes of memory, of memory, Ignite persistence will keep all the records for us, okay? And probably final check, final thing to show you, I was saying that even if you shut down your Ignite cluster with the native persistence, you're not losing a single bit of data. Let's quickly do this final thing and I will finish with the, uh, with the demo. Okay, I shut down the cluster. I'm restarting this node. Right now we are talking about a single node cluster. So you see that this node is up and running. This time the cluster was auto activated automatically because I had only one node. This node is up again and there is nothing else to wait for. That's why the cluster is active and I can work with this cluster. So, but anyway, uh, that connection with the SQL line tool was dropped, which means that I need to reconnect from the SQL line side again. But if I reconnect and if I execute the same select command, I see that all the data is in the cluster. I did not, I don't need to preload anything. Uh, and what's more important, whenever I'm executing any anything like let's say select from uh, fielding uh, limit ten, uh, ignite ignite is not loading anything in memory by default right now. All those records were served from disk and like were preloaded uh, in memory only when I requested them. So I don't need to wait while the memory is being warmed up. Okay, so that's the demo. 
hope you right now might can kind of comprehend better what's the difference between a various eviction policy like various uh, out of memory preventive techniques let it be eviction policy native persistence just keep them in mind and we've got uh, 15 minutes left uh, still guys if you have any questions uh, don't hesitate to use the chat window uh, but in the meantime let me finish my part and uh, introduce you to the last advanced capability that is related to the SQL. We are going to talk about SQL memory quotas because what happened with SQL? In, in my current demo, I was demonstrating how you know to execute simple SQL commands like uh, the count command, or let's say I selected you know some random 10 records. But in the real life, you can run advanced queries with joins, with analy like advanced analytical queries. And those queries, you know, can process like thousands, if not like hundreds of thousands of records. And uh, that can impact not only the performance of your cluster, but also can sometimes lead to the out of memory situation. So why, why so that? Let me briefly introduce you to the internal of the SQL engine of Ignite. So let's take this simple example. Let's say the time I'd like to calculate uh, an average population uh, of, the, of all the cities I store in the cluster. So what happens? That that query that query will be split. Uh, the execution will be split into two phases: the map phase and the reduce phase. With the map phase, uh, Ignite transforms this query into the following one, and that second then that transformed query will be executed on the two cluster nodes, as you see. Once those uh, two cluster nodes uh, finish with their part, they will respond to your application returning their part of the result set and your application will reduce will execute the reduce phase it will kind of reduce merge together two result sets and then it will return this result to your application uh, and here is uh, this execution process is interesting for us in terms of their memory consumption right what's being used because today we are talking about out of memory issues and uh, how ignite deals with the memory and storage engine so from that perspective, first, when you send any query to Ignite, Ignite will be parsing this query. Uh, for that time, that time Ignite will be using a little bit of Java heap. Then Ignite will switch to the planning phase. Uh, again, we will be using heap, not that much, nothing serious. Then once Ignite will start executing your query, it will start scanning your tables, uh, your data, though that data resides in the off heap memory, as you remember. And also it can do full tab table scans or it, if you don't have any indexes defined or it will be using indexes to uh, expedite your search. But then once Ignite transitions to the so-called the computing phase when Ignite needs to join any tables or you know process any expressions like, like the average one from the previous slide or do anything else, it will be dealing with results set that will be stored in your Java heap. And then that time, depending on your query complexity, complexity, Ignite might eat and consume a lot of Java heap. And here is, if let's say you go beyond the given Java heap capacity, you can either your Ignite node can, you know, transition into a zombie mode, meaning that it will be spending most of its time, you know, garbage collecting everything, or it can also kind of sometimes lead to like out of memory incidents. So how can we, and here is, I want to talk about memory quotas because that's an exceptional technique that you should have in your toolbox if you'd like to avoid any out of memory issues or any uh, lengthy stop the world pauses uh, caused by SQL queries. So how do I enable and work with memory quotas? When you're creating your Ignite configuration, you also need to create SQL configuration uh, bin. And then in that SQL configuration setting, you are specifying the global memory quota for your SQL queries. In this example, I'm saying that all the SQL queries that, were, that will be executing on this node, uh, on one node, cannot use more than 500 megabytes uh, of uh, Java heap. Also, I decided to set uh, a peer query quota. Uh, this setting says that every individual query cannot use more than uh, 40 megabytes. So the total, the, the, the global is 500 megabytes or the queries combined cannot use, uh, cannot go beyond that uh, threshold. 
while every individual query cannot uh, use more than 40 uh, megabytes of Java heap. So what happens? Let's say that let's let's say that you execute a SQL query and any of these uh, quotas is violated. So what happens? There are two possible outcomes. By default, Ignite will uh, terminate that query and your uh, application will get an exception. And after that, your application needs to kind of figure out what happens and you need to re-execute this query a little bit later. But at least here is you are getting an exception because memory quota was violated and now it's up to you kind of to avoid this from happening. Probably again, you need to scale out your cluster or you need to check the execution plan of this query and optimize it. But also another, if you want to avoid those exceptions, if you don't want to deal with those exceptions, you can enable, uh, you can ask Ignite to offload result sets to disk. Let's say that again, uh, that query violated their uh, global memory quota threshold. And right now, instead of uh, throwing an exception, Ignite will offload your result set to disk. And that result set will be served from disk to your application. And also during any other calculations, Ignite node might need to do with that result set. In this case, it's uh, run, it, will be, it will not be surprised that your performance will suffer uh, at least a little bit. Uh, because the disk is slower than space, but at least your cluster stays operational, you're avoiding any out-of-memory issues. Uh, but uh, as a trade-off, you agreed you know, to uh, impact your performance, at least for this given query. So keep this in mind. So as for the uh, specific use cases, when you should use those memory quotas, Things like when you sort data, because if Ignite needs to sort your data, it has to have the whole result set in memory, right? Reload it and ready, so use it. And use uh, the upload into disk feature. Also, if you group data or if you execute any SQL queries with sub queries, or especially what you've seen many times if you run any complex analytical queries, those analytical queries are usually uh, deal with pretty decent, pretty decent data sets which means that Java heap pressure will be pretty high. So use memory quotas. All right, folks, uh, we've made it. And as a summary, let's recap. Let this final slide uh, be your cheat sheet. Uh, when, when we are talking about out of memory issues, what I've said, usually uh, they might happen in your production clusters, in your pre-production clusters, even if you uh, made a great job, you know, by estimating the required cluster capacity, only because let's say, in five or three or whatever years, the, the current cluster capacity might be not enough. And you, it, it's good to have some preventive measures in place so that when the data volume burst happens, you have a lot of the time, you know, let's say to scale out your cluster to a new configuration while uh, uh, the current cluster stays operational. So I would probably, my, my personal opinion is that if Ignite Native Persistence works for you, if you're ready to allocate disk space for keeping all the records, consider Ignite native persistence as the default option. Otherwise, use eviction policies, expression policies, or swiping. Also, if you're dealing with SQL queries, especially with analytical or like real-time analytical use cases, then uh, keep in mind that we have memory quotas. So memory quotas, and also just in case, if you don't want, you know, to if you don't want to process exceptions, that are generated when any query violates any quota threshold, then enable a float into disk. And uh, memory quotas are not available in Ignite uh, 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 right now. So if you want to use them, you need to switch to Grid Gain Community Edition, which is also a free version that is available for everybody. Uh, and finally, uh, but also keep in mind that all, all these features that we just discussed in this context today, uh, I was uh, using them in reference to their, like as a out of memory preventive measure, which means that your best bet is that when you are running out of memory, anyway, go ahead and scale out your cluster because you will be able, you know, to recover and keep your performance characteristics as they were before. Okay. Uh, also, when we are we, we were discussing, we were discussing all this like storage engine today, how memory is used, like how to optimize, what to enable, etc. So, if you want to monitor uh, all those uh, um, different memory metrics or that will impl 
impact your performance, you can use uh, grid gain control center. And so here is uh, down the slide, we have a special tutorial that was prepared for you. You can go ahead and try to create your own memory and monitoring solution uh, based on grid gain control center for your Apache Ignite clusters. So check it out. Having said that, uh, I've done my part. So guys, if you have any questions, uh, I'm happy to answer them. Are any use cases specifically um, dealt with better with some one of one of other techniques? So I would say that uh, yeah, that's 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 an interesting question. I would say that with Ignite Native Persistence, uh, as with any other capability, you always uh, have a trade-off. With Ignite Native Persistence, the trade-off is that that's a disk storage, meaning that. If you enable it, Ignite Native Persistence starts keeping the data on disk, which means that you need to do two things. You need to, uh, let's say, uh, allocate uh, required disk capacity, and also your write performance uh, will be slower if to compare to a pure in-memory cluster of Ignite. Your read performance uh, can stay the same uh, if, let's say, you can cache, if you have enough memory to cache all your data records. So with and uh, with write performance, you can just go ahead and you know do some certain optimizations. But write performance of the cluster with uh, native persistence will not be the same as with a pure in-memory cluster. That's just you know uh, laws of physics. So, but that's uh, but at least if you do this, then uh, in return you're getting some durable storage. You're loading the data, and you don't need to reload this data never back again. Let's say to ignite if, if that's not a requirement. Uh, eviction expiration policies might be much better suited to swap space even uh, for pure in-memory clusters uh, when Ignite is used as a cache or like as a memory data grid. Uh, in those scenarios, usually you always have some golden copy of the data stored somewhere and you might, probably some of the companies, they just reload the data in Ignite, let's say every day or like every two days. And it's not a big deal for them, let's say, if the eviction policy kicks in and eviction policy removes some records, then they always will be able to bring those records back to the cluster. Or let's say if they use the swap space uh, and uh, with the swap space also, if any node goes down, then they also will be able to reload this data. So I would say that when you're comparing Ignite Native Persistence to other uh, out of memory uh, preventive measurements, it's like the question, are you ready is it tricky for you to reload the data if it's get evicted do you need to reload the data if, if it's get evicted if it's tricky if you don't want to be bothered on the reloading phase of the data then the native persistence is your kind of lifesaver otherwise if it's kind of easy to reload not a big deal then you can consider uh, the other uh, preventive measures such as eviction expiration or swapping great uh, there's a question from Alexander. He's asking about, um, I guess, best practices about um, garbage collector settings. Do you have any advice? Uh, as for the garbage collector settings, uh, you know, uh, most likely, most likely, you have already checked uh, Ignite's, uh, you know, standard uh, documentation page where we collected uh, some, you know universal garbage collection garbage co garbage collection uh, optimization settings if you have not done that yet just uh, go to the uh, docs of apache ignite and you will find it under the performance and troubleshooting section uh, apart from that uh, you know initially i wanted to discuss uh, some postless garbage collectors as part of this conversation but that uh, turns out that was a little bit off topic Speaking about poseless, poseless garbage collectors, uh, let's say uh, Ignite can be, I would, I, let's say that you, 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 you're, you're dealing with some data intensive application. Under the data intensive application, I assume that, let's say you might have some OTP use case when you're running, let's say hundreds if not thousands of operations per second, like, and those operations have to complete. And that volume of the operations inevitably will stress out your Java heap, which means that your Java heap your, your, your node processes might spend a lot of the time, you know, garbage collecting all this stuff. Postless garbage collectors can uh, help us a lot in those scenarios because they can, you know, reduce the latency time and kind of actually make, 
make 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 your garbage collector collection cycles more predictable. So here is a, at least we were using and testing and using Ignite. I know that Ignite is widely used with uh, Azul C4 Postgres garbage collector. Uh, and if you Google for let's say something like Apache Ignite and Azul, you will find some blog posts uh, that describe how like what what you're getting in return if you start using any Postgres garbage collectors. And the same Postgres garbage collectors uh, they are should be considered for let's say analytical use cases because we were discussing SQL memory quotas uh, technique. You also you, you should use it anyway if you are dealing with analytical use cases. But also with analytical use cases, if you want to have some, if you when you're putting a lot of the data in uh, in Java heap, inevitably sometimes it will lead to long Java garbage collection pauses and probably pauseless garbage collectors also will be uh, a good choice here. So we were testing, I would I can right now speak only for Azul C4. That's something that I was personally involved in. As for the Shinadon uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, and other garbage collectors, uh, postless garbage collectors that are coming and will be introduced to GDK, I think they uh, they should have quite similar characteristics. Hope I answered right. the question. Great. Uh, just one one final question from uh, Gino. Is there a default eviction or expiration policy or time if, if you don't supply one? Uh, no, no, no. By default, uh, if, if to show you back my configuration, by default, when you're creating your data region like here, right, I, I don't have any eviction policy set, which means that the eviction will not be used. And whenever you decide to uh, let's say define any eviction policy, you have to select uh, like one of them. It's like by default is disabled eviction policy. And then if you decide to enable it, you need to decide which one. And the same applies to the expiration policy. When you're defining expiration policy, I think that you have to specify some time. If you don't set it, probably Ignite has some, uh, you know, default setting, but it will be faster, you know, to check with uh, uh, the source code or with the community. All right. Uh, thanks, Dennis. Thanks, everyone.